is from the book of Romans, the third chapter, beginning with the 21st verse. And the apostle Paul writes the following by the Holy Spirit. But now, the righteousness of God has been revealed apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who live. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. He writes the first lesson. Psalm this morning is taken from in Psalm 85, it's on page 254. We're going to start with verse 8 through 13. Starting with verse 8. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly is salvation is greater to those who fear him. That is glory and well Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his seed. Does not have flesh and bones as you see the light. 
And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of royal fish. And he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated.
Totally right. And what we need to understand is that this righteousness does not come from anything you and I did. It comes as a gift through faith in what Jesus did. We are not right with God because we are so smart and clever with God. We are right with God because Jesus paid our penalty and was raised from the dead. So we are right by faith in what Christ accomplished for us on Calvary's hill and by his resurrection and ascension. Faith in Jesus is what brings that righteousness into our lives. Now, the reason that's important is for the following three reasons. First of all, we need to remember where our righteousness comes from. Because the enemy of our soul, the devil, uses one weapon very effectively against every Christian. And you know what that is? Guilt. He uses guilt very effectively. He will remind you of every misstep you've ever made. He will remind you of every sin you've ever committed. He will remind you, condemn you, of everything you've ever said that you're sorry for. By the way, you ever walk around minding your own business and then in your mind comes something that you did when you were in middle school? And you remember that? And, and now, you're, now you're a Christian, now you're serving God, and you're sitting there going, wow. That was incredibly stupid. Incredibly mean. What was I thinking? Well, the devil come right in and say, what? You're like, you've always been this way. You're a mean, wicked, evil person. I don't know how God can stand you. And if we believe that our righteousness comes from ourselves, then that condemnation and guilt will work. It will keep us from walking with God. Because the look at God is being angry at us all the time. Because it's something we didn't pass. That's where the devil wants us. Not coming to God, fleeing from God, and if guilt works, so he use it. But remember, the devil's a liar. And you're not wearing your own righteousness, you're wearing what Christ has given you. And Christ's righteousness is perfectly perfect. It's, he's never sinned. So when you are wearing what he has, you need to draw the devil's attention to that and say, excuse me, but I'm not involved in my own righteousness, which is imperfect at best. I am involved in Christ's righteousness that is perfectly perfect. And you've got nothing to say about that. So get out of here. You can do that. If you're going to overcome guilt and condemnation, you need to remember where your righteousness comes from. It comes from Christ. He is the one who has given you His righteousness. You don't have to depend on your own. Because you can't depend on your own. He has given it to you, His own. But now that leads us to the second point. We need to start seeing ourselves the way God sees us. Not the way the devil wants us to see. Not the way the world tells us we need to see. The way God sees us. You see, what we need to understand is that from the very beginning, although God has always hated sin, He has never hated you. Never. Never. Can we remember John chapter 3, verse 16? It says that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son. Jesus didn't come into the world on his own. He came at the behest of the Father who loves all of us so much that he wants us to be his children. He wants us to be saved from the power of sin, death, and the devil. And when he raised Jesus up from the dead, he wants us to come to him as children and not remain rebels who are under condemnation. God really does love you. The Father really wants to be 
reconciled to you as his children. And when we come to realize that righteousness means I can come before God any time. And he doesn't hate me. He wants to hear from me. When I can come to God and know that he is my loving father and he wants to be in a deep, intimate relationship with me, it makes all the difference. The devil wants you to think of God as stern. He doesn't want to be disturbed by you. And that's why he'll throw you into condemnation. But that's not, that's not what God is saying through the resurrection of Jesus. Through the resurrection of Jesus, he's saying, come to me. I want you to come to me. I want you to be my children. I want you to be set free. I want you to ask me so that I might give to you all that I have for you. Your presence are inside. All of you. We need to see ourselves the way God sees us. That doesn't mean we're perfect. That doesn't mean there aren't times when we need to change and confess our sins. But God is not the one who will ever bring you into condemnation. The devil does. But not God. He will bring you into correction. But not into condemnation. They're two entirely different things. Correction leads to improvement. Condemnation leads to no improvement. You're just stuck forever. But now, the reason I'm bringing these two up is because of the third point that we need to consider today. And it's this. The devil does not want you to grab hold of the fact that you are right with God through the blood of Jesus and by his resurrection, he does not want you to know that for one very important reason. If you were ever to stand on the righteousness that belongs to you as a him, the devil would be in real trouble. Why? Because when Jesus redeemed us, he not only redeemed us away from the power of sin, death, and the devil, but he also redeemed us or brought us back into the inheritance that was lost when Adam and Eve sinned. We need to remember that when Adam and Eve sinned, they were, before they sinned, I'm sorry, they were given dominion. They were to rule over the earth. They were God's angels who were to govern according to his word. God gave them authority. But when they sinned, they lost that authority, and the authority was stolen by the devil. But once we've been redeemed by the blood, once we've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, once he has filled us with his Holy Spirit, we are restored to the authority that was lost. And that means that we stand in the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We can praise power. And that is what we're finding in James. In James, we're told that the prayer of the righteous is power. In other words, when you pray, you should expect answers. When you pray, you should kind of expect that your Father is ready to act on your behalf. You know, I've seen people come to God in prayer, in prayer and, they're, and, they're, and, they're, and they're doing this. Well, I don't think we really want to, Lord, but if I can't decide to, then pray. You know, that sounds humble, but it's really not. It's really unbelievable. You know why? Because God's already told you what he wants to do. And he doesn't want you to come thinking that, well, maybe he will or maybe he won't, because he doesn't want you thinking that, that, that his promises are based on a point plan. You ever see that? that there, sometimes they show this uh, on some counties where two people are praying to God and God decides it. <laughs> All right. That's not how God is. Come, pray according to your will, and you shall have whatever it is you're asking for. The 
devil knows this. He doesn't want you know. Because if we ever pray in the righteousness that we've been given, then he would lose every time. So he wants us to live condemned lives. He wants us to live in guilt. He wants us to live believing that we're not even uh, something God wants to look at. But he'll power in us. He wants us to believe that. But it's not true. The prayer and the righteous is in power. And one of the lies that the devil will bring into our lives when it comes back to prayer is this. You'll notice that in James, he mentions Elijah. And I don't know about you, but way back when I first became a Christian, I used to say this to myself. Well, I can believe that yeah. God will answer Elijah's prayers. I can believe that God will answer Mary's prayers. I can believe that God will answer Peter and Paul's prayers. I can believe that God will answer Moses' prayers. Because they were entirely different people than myself. Entirely different. That's what we tend to think. But that's a lie. They weren't entirely different people. You know, when you go to the Bible, you know what you find about the saints? Every one of them was a sinner. Every one of them was imperfect. Every one of them had, as we read in James, a nature like our own. What does that mean? It means that Elijah could be crabby sometimes. Elijah could have great victories in the Lord and all of a sudden forget him and start living in fear and living in doubt. The, the best example of that, by the way, is when he finally, the, 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 the rain, had rain for three years and six months, okay? So finally, God brings Elijah to Mount Carmel with the prophets of Baal. They build two altars. And whichever God brought fire from heaven, that was the true God. Well, the prophets of Baal started, they were going on for a long time, nothing happened. And then Elijah calls in the name of the Lord, boom, fire comes down and consumes the altar. He saw a great thing. All of a sudden, the people of Israel who were gathered there were like, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. It looks like there's going to be a revival break out. They killed the, 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 the prophets of Baal. And then Elijah starts to pray. And it doesn't rain right away. And it doesn't rain right away. And all of a sudden, there's a little big cloud. And then it becomes a great big cloud. And then all of a sudden, we have a downpour that's going on. And Elijah had to see victory after victory after victory. All right? He had seen the devil put down. He goes to the, the, the capital city of Israel, and one little woman named Jezebel, the queen, sends a messenger to uh, Elijah, and she says, you know, the court of water will have you killed. Now Elijah had just seen fire come down from heaven. He has been protected by God for three and a half years. He has seen resurrections. He has seen provision. He has seen revival. He has seen God bring rain. And this one woman, like the blood, says, Tomorrow I'm going to have you killed. What does Elijah do? I'm going to get loud just for a second. This is what he does. <laughs> and he runs. And he doesn't stop running for 40 days. And then he gets to Mount Sinai. And all the way, this is what he's doing. I can't believe the group I live. That's the will. That happened. Oh, by the way, they killed everybody except me. Oh, what was he? Feeling sorry for himself. After he's seen all this stuff. In, in other words, Elijah was just like us. He had human failings. His righteousness was not based on how perfect he was or even how, how, how strong he could keep his own faith. His righteousness was based on his faith in God. He trusted God. There are times when he wasn't perfect. But God never let him go. And he never let God go. And that's the thing of righteous. He wasn't righteous because he was a superman. 
school is right with my family. That's how all things are right with And if we would get that in our hearts and let that praise form us, then we would pray and we would see great victories. And even if we don't see those great victories right away, then what we would do, we would keep praying. Because we know the answers all the way. So today, remember <coughs> that you are righteous, not because of what you have done, but because of what Jesus has done. He has made you right with the Father. His resurrection is your righteousness. And when we put our faith in Him, when we are called back into our natural place of having authority, and we exercise that authority by prayer, by praying for others, by seeking God for others, by calling on the name of the Lord for every situation that comes into our lives, believing that our Father will answer. Don't believe that when He says, well, you know, that prayer is work. No, just keep praying. Keep trusting God. Because the prayer of the righteous is powerful. And you are the righteous. Not because I say so. But because God has made himself through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you have made us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you that we can come before you, Father, and know that you answer the prayers of your children. And we are your children. You see Christ in us. Lord, we ask now that, that you would guide us by the Holy Spirit. Show us where we need to pray and how we need to pray. So that your power in this Lord confirms the word and the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we reject all the lies of the devil that will keep us from prayer and keep us from you. And we receive the gift of Jesus Christ with that gift. Pour out the Holy Spirit in each one of us that we may walk by the Spirit, not by the flesh. And we ask this in Jesus' name, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. All right, let's sing our next, uh, our next song, Because He Lives. That's 292 in your folders. 292.
We pray your blessing on our military personnel, especially Rosie Meese, David Burke, Sammy Meese, Riley Lancasey, and Harvey Hagman. And we pray your blessings on all those who have been out, either out loud or in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for healing my sister from COVID. Amen. And also just be with me as I've been having trouble sleeping lately. And I need you just to help me um, can do this. Yes, Lord. Yes. I pray for our brothers and sisters at Gilgrit and uh, Andrea Sandstreet. And Lord, I pray for all of our families and loved ones who are being uh, affected by or oppressed by that Jezebel spirit that you were talking about here this morning. Father, that anxiety that comes and uh, doubt that can come to our mind and every other uh, foolish idea that come from this evil one, Lord. And I just pray for that high hedge of protection in your arm around all of us and our loved yes. ones. Praise God. Thank you. I just pray for that protection and thinking in particular of brothers and sisters in Nicaragua that are affected by this uh, a lot, Lord Jesus. Yes. Lord, I pray for your continued healing in Jim Waltz and Donna Ross and Michael Paul. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Say, uh, uh, did, yeah. oh, I'd like to add one more thing, Pastor. I just pray again for that healing service Tuesday night coming up. Lord, just pour out your spirit on uh, all that are there and Pastor Rod as you, know, you lead that service just a double portion of the outpouring of the spirit upon yes. all praise God Lord in your mercy hear our, our prayers in your hands O Lord we commend all of whom we pray trust in your mercy for yourself Jesus Christ God Lord. Amen. Amen. the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, science of your gracious love. We receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of it. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as we are his disciples on earth, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not out of temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Imenso. Body of the Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen the kingdom of Christ.